When was the last time you checked out the Google Photos app? Well, maybe it's time to fall back in love with Google Photos. Hi, I'm Amanda Scott, the photo organizer, and I'm all about helping you preserve and share your precious photo and video memories without getting overwhelmed. If you're looking to rediscover life's special moments and protect them for future generations, then be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Google Photos got a bit of a bad rap over the last few years, with a lot of people talking about the fact that it's no longer free for unlimited storage. But let's think about it. Apple and Amazon haven't exactly been free for years. So maybe it's time to lay off Google Photos and check out why it might be the best option for you to back up and enjoy your photos. In this video, I'm going to give you a bit of a tour and the reasons why I love it, some drawbacks and one big watch out when setting up your Google Photos account, so don't miss that one. What is it? Google Photos is the Google offering for backing up, enjoying and sharing your photos and videos. You pay for the total amount of storage you use on Google, so it includes things like Gmail, Docs, Sheets and Slides, for example. There are both web and phone app options that work pretty much the same way. If you use Google to run your life, then Photos is definitely something to check out. A bit of a tour. Everything I'm about to show you on my computer, you can also do on your phone. So let's check it out. So when you first log into Google Photos on your computer, you get this front screen with all of your photos by date. If you go over to the right hand side, you can scroll all the way down to whatever date you want to find. You get some highlights at the top to give you things that you've done in the past, but the core area is around here on the left hand side. The first area is explore, and it's where you can look for people and the faces that Google has identified for you. You can also click and then see all the photos of a particular person when you've allocated a name to them. You can see places where you've taken photos and it will also come up with things that is found in your photos as well. And this is where you can do things like some creations. You can also do a bit of photo sorting when if you want to find screenshots or selfies, you can search for those photos and delete them. You can also search using the box at the top. So if you put in beach, you can search and it will come up with all of the photos that have a beach in it, which is great. The next area is sharing, which is where you can share photos with friends and family. They can share you a link for an album and then you can put your photos into those albums. Now, when you load your photos up into Google Photos, any kind of folder structure that you will have created will have disappeared. But what you can do is create albums as per the folders of special events that you've created. Also in this area just above, you can see all of your favorite photos as well. The other area that you can look at is the utilities, which is where you can create movies and animations and collages. You can also do a bit of organizing things like archiving and then backing up your photos to your computer. And then you've got the archive and trash, which hopefully are self-explanatory. To load your photos up, you just press the upload button and you pick where you want the photos to be loaded from. You can also set it so that your phone will auto upload and back up into Google Photos. So the photos that you can see here, I haven't actually loaded them up into Google Photos. They've actually automatically loaded up from my phone. So let's go and have a look at the phone app. So the phone is very similar, but with that lovely section that's on the left hand side on your computer screen is at the bottom and explore is called search, which makes way more sense to me, but hey, that is just me. To set your phone to back up your photos, you go to settings, back up and sync and toggle across the back up and sync option. You can also decide on the upload size. If you are not sure what that means, then check out my big watch out at the end of this video. The phone app is also where you can switch on the faces function rather than randomly, not on the web app. You need to head on over to settings, photo settings and group similar faces, toggle over group similar faces and it will then group similar faces. So there you have it, the Google Photos app. Why I love it. 
Well, the one thing about Google is that you know it is going to do the whole kit and caboodle of stuff. Not only does it do photos, but you've got documents and sheets and email, you name it, you can use Google to sort your entire life if that's what you want. But that also does mean they are going to want to constantly improve their services to keep you coming back. So any of my niggles will hopefully be improved in time. It is also really easy to set up and a great automatic backup option for Android users out there. Google Photos is great for sharing. I have a mate who is super organized with getting us all to upload our photos following a trip to her Google shared folders. So she has our photos as well as hers. I love her organization. It makes me so happy. Some drawbacks. I have to say, when it comes to Google Photos, although you can search for stuff and create albums, the memory feature is not exactly epic. To be honest, it's a little bit yuck. I've also found that the faces feature can be a little bit glitchy and needs a little bit of work to get going sometimes. Also, if you ever want to exit Google and download all of your photos, it's not exactly easy, but it is possible with Google Takeout, which is where you can download any of your Google information, but it's not exactly user-friendly with a load of zip files, but it is not impossible. The big watch out. Now, listen very carefully. There is one setting that you 100% have to make a decision on when you set up Google Photos. Otherwise, there will be tears. Google Photos likes to optimize your photos or compress them to save space when it loads them up. They call it storage saver. Now, if you are taking photos on your phone and you see the optimized version versus the non-optimized version, you will really not see much of a difference. But if you're using high resolution photos and you are loading them up into Google Photos, seeing the optimized version will make you weep as to how bad it looks but you can set the upload size for your photos and videos to the original quality in the settings. Obviously, if you do that, it will take up more space and then you'll have to start spending more money. But if you want to use Google Photos as your backup and the legacy for your photos, then I would highly suggest you change that storage setting to original quality so that you can keep the original photos. You have been warned. So there you have it, the Google Photos app. What other apps do you use to share and back up your photos? Leave them in the comments below. Are you struggling to actually start organizing your photos and videos? Don't know where to start? I have put together a simple, straightforward, quick start guide to organizing your photos that's linked in the description below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead with a like and a share and don't forget to subscribe. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.